All right, so uh, I want to use the language of categories to talk about uh, things in the future, so I'm going to get some of this stuff out of the way. So um, uh, categories and functors uh, that we need. All right, so um, so there's a bunch of different categories that we can consider. Let me go grab a piece of paper over here where I have some of these things. OK. Um, so what's a category? So there's, there's, there's categories are collections of objects and morphisms. And, um, and the, the, let me just say that the, the uh, morphisms are, are like homomorphisms, group homomorphisms, ring homomorphisms, abelian group homomorphisms. If it's the category of sets, it's functions. If it's the category of topological spaces, it's continuous maps. Um, and the, the, okay, all a category needs to do is it needs to have uh, an associative uh, composition map between morphisms. And each object needs an identity, which is both a left and right identity. All right? So in order to specify a category, you just specify objects and morphisms. And that's all a category is. Okay? So, um, uh, so, so let me give you some examples of, of categories. So, okay. So um, there's the category top of topological spaces. So the objects are topological spaces. And the morphisms are continuous maps. Okay, so this is this is a basic example. Um, so you could have uh, so I, I guess we can start here. Example A. Okay, example B. So you could have sets. Right. So the objects are well sets, and the morphisms are functions. Okay. What's another category? So um, we could have the category of groups. So groups. So the objects here are groups. And the morphisms are group homomorphisms. OK. Uh, so what's another category that we need? OK, so here's one that we will we'll need to talk about. So there's the category uh, top star. Okay, and so um, so this is the category of of pointed topological spaces. Okay, so the objects here. Okay, they're they're pairs x and x naught, where um, x is a x is a topological space. So we'll write an element of top. So it's, and, and then an x naught is an element of x. Okay, and then the morphisms. So from uh, uh, from one pointed topological space to another. Right. So these are um, continuous maps. So we'll write it like this. So f is a morphism. Uh, so here's here's f is a continuous map from x to y. So continuous. And um, and it needs to satisfy that f of x naught is equal to y naught. Okay, so this is uh, the category of pointed topological spaces. All right, uh, here's another category that we'll need. Uh, we'll do top pair. So this is the category of topological pairs. Of topological pairs. So the objects here, uh, so these are going to be uh, x, a. So this, is, um, so this is x is a topological space. And a is a subspace of x, so uh, given the subspace topology. And then morphisms. So a morphism from, uh, from x, a to y, b. Well, this is a continuous map, f, 
uh, from x to y such that, well, f of a is a subset of b. Okay, so these are, um, these are things that you can have. Okay, so these are, these are some categories that we're going to work with. So these are, uh, um, not all the categories we'll work with, but th this, is a, this is a handful of categories. Okay, so um, uh, this is what, what, what these things are. Um, so let, you can get a little bit crazier. So let me, let me give you um, another category. Okay, well, actually, before I get to there, let me say that, that there's, there's uh, functors. Okay, so these are, these are okay, so le let me give you the things that you need to have. So, uh, so uh, have, okay, so we need to have, uh, so identity, so the axioms are is that they're the morphisms, uh, so composition of morphisms are associative and that every object has an identity element. Okay, and so I'm going to use some notation uh, frequently, and so that if, if C is a category, then we're going to say, we're, we're, we'll, we'll use the, the notation x is an element of C, C to say that x is an object of C. Okay, and then, um, uh, so, in, and then if you have, uh, so given, uh, so given two objects here, right, so sometimes we write uh, C of X, Y. So this is HOM C of X, Y, right? And so this is uh, uh, morphisms from X to Y in the category C. So, um, Sometimes it's vague if you just write hom and you don't specify c, but then you don't want to really write hom all the time, so you can just write it like this. Um, all right. Uh, a good example is that sometimes, like if you if you have uh, if you just write hom, if you have two abelian groups, and I just write hom from one abelian group to another, do I mean a map of sets? Do I mean or do I mean an abelian group homomorphism? And those are different things. Okay. Um, so so this is the this is the hom set of this thing. Uh, so also there's a there's a distinguished element here, I the identity of x or 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 sometimes it's written i of x, so this is in uh, here, uh, c of x x, so this is the identity morphism. Okay, so these are these are the axioms here, right? And then these are the uh, th this is this is some notation for for certain things. Uh, for for uh, for Homs, all right. Um, that's is that all I want to say about uh, objects and morphisms. Um, okay, so now let me just say a couple more things about. Uh, so let me let me let me talk about functors for a second. Okay, so uh, so functors. So this is kind of what makes everything go. Okay. So it turns out that the category of categories is a category, right? So the category of categories is a category. Okay, and so we'll use this notation cat. So this is the category of categories. Okay, and so the objects of this this category, so uh, the objects are well, they're, they're categories. And then the morphisms are um, the, the the morphisms are of what are called functors. Okay, from C to D. Okay, and what they are is they're like homomorphisms of homomorphisms. 
right? And so if um, uh, so, what, what they so what they need to satisfy. So so uh, so what do these things satisfy? Okay. So what do they do? So if uh, let's say uh, A to B is a morphism in C, right? Then, uh, what we, that, that, then what we do is we apply F to the whole thing. F of A, F of F to F of B is a morphism In D. Okay, so these are um, uh, so this is what what the this they needs needs to satisfy. So it's like this uh, this maps from A to B. This is in the category C. Right, so they get mapped via F to a different object and a different morphism here, and this is in in D. Okay, so what's an example of such a thing? So, so let, let me say, the, um, uh, so, so the rules are, uh, oh, this, this got blocked a little bit, but you can see. So the rules are that f of, f composed with g, this needs to be f of f, uh, composed with f of g, and f of an identity on x is going to be uh, the identity of f of x. Okay, so identities go to identities, and the composition is respected. All right, that's that's pretty much it. Um, all right. So, um, what are some examples? Okay, so let's give some examples. Okay, so if uh, C is the category of groups. And D is the category of sets, right? So there's a functor, forget, from, uh, from groups to sets, where, where it takes a group and it just views it as a set. Okay, so these are called, this is called a forgetful functor. Okay? Um, there's another functor. Well, there's 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 another functor that's related to this, right? Um, uh, there, there's so if you if you you can also have another one. So there's this there's a so here's one. Let's do another one. B. So you could also have sets go to groups. And so what you can do it, this is called the free functor, right? And uh, so what it does is it takes a set and then it, it maps it to the uh, f of s. And this is the free group on S. So it's just all words, you know, all words, uh, all words in the category, uh, or sorry, in, in the set S. And so, you know, with, with you add an extra identity element, uh, identity element. Uh, so this is maybe free. Uh, with uh, you know you, you throw in an identity, and then you throw in s inverse for each s and s. Uh, s. So for example, um, uh, so if if s is the set is the set a b c then uh, the free group on S, right? So this is the group generated by A, B, C, right? And so this thing contains elements like A, B inverse A squared C, right? Or A to the 100 C inverse B, right? It contains all these, these, just, all these words that you can write down just with uh, A, B, and C, okay? Um, and it turns out that there's a relationship between these two, two functors, uh, the free and forgetful functor, 
Um, and, and it's the following. So, uh, and I always have to remember how this goes. So, uh, so if you have a morphism, so if we take groups, okay, and I have a map from a set S, oh, so let's see. So if I take sets, and I have a map from a set S into uh, the group, into a group G, into, let's say, forget G. So I just have a function, right, from S to uh, this, OK? So uh, from S to, to this, this uh, set G that's as a set. Well, this induces a group homomorphism from the, the, the free group into G, OK? And there's actually a bijection between these two. So there's a bijection. Okay, moreover, this bijection behaves well, right? And this is kind of the first example of, of what's called a, an adjunction, right? So the functors, so the free forget is an adjoint pair. It's what's so-called an adjoint pair of functors. Okay, and so, um, all right, so that's, that's uh, I, I'll talk a little bit more about adjoints in a moment. Um, all right, so this is one uh, functor. Okay, uh, so what's another, what's another functor that we could do? So, uh, so C, okay, so um, if uh, X is an element of C, then uh, there's, there's always a, a functor, right, uh, h of x from, uh, from c to sets, right? And what it does is it takes an object uh, y, and then it maps it to c of x uh, y, okay? So this is a functor. Okay, and so what it does is this is so so this this is uh, hx of y, so this is the Hahn set, and so this this is sometimes called the functor represented by by x. Okay, so you always have something like this. Uh, that that it, it, so it, I guess it's kind of tricky to see that um, if uh, so. Suppose we have a, a map from y one to y two. Okay, so if we have a morphism like this in, in this category C, uh, then uh, how do we get a map? Uh, uh, so then how do we get a map from C of x y one to C of x, y, 2. OK, so here, uh, so if we have something here, phi, how do we get from here to here? Uh, OK, so let's, let's see what happens. So we have this thing, and we have an f. So how can I get from x to y, 2, right? So I'm given some x to y, 1, right? And then I'm given y, 1 to y, 2, like this. And so, uh, so this was the original map f that we had. And we had this phi here. And so I guess I could just compose these two like this. So I could take phi, and then I could apply f. So I could map this to uh, uh, f composed with phi. Yep, that's the right way, right? Like so. OK, so this is, um, uh, this is uh, the, so, so, so this, is, this has a name. Uh, so sometimes we write this thing here as uh, f lower star of phi, okay? And, uh, this is like a push forward. Okay, so th this is a this is a, a functor, or or you know if, if we were going to stay with our other notation, this would be. Um, uh, so I guess this would be h. We could write this as uh, uh, h x. of f of phi, okay? Because 
so again, we had a map from uh, so we had a map from y1 to y2, and we're going to get a map here from h x of y1 to h x of y2, and we need uh, to take h x of f, and so it needs to operate on things here to give you an element here. All right, so this is, uh, this is, uh, this is, these are representable functors. These will be important later. Um, so what's another, so there's this example. All right, so uh, I'm going to stop here for a second to make sure I just don't go, I could, you could probably talk en for hours about this, so I'm trying to uh, cut my time. Be careful with my time. <laughs> 